State CIOs continue to look for ways to modernize the way they meet citizen services. If the pandemic elevated one priority across the board, it is the need for agencies to engage with constituents more fully and to improve digital services that they deliver. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group and joining us to talk about how one state is transforming the way it does business is Wayne Gloss, Chief Information Officer for the Tennessee Department of Human Services. Wayne has served as CIO with Tennessee's Human Services for the past four and a half years. Prior to working in public service, Wayne held key executive positions in the private sector and has brought his experience to bear in his efforts to modernize the state's approach to constituent services. Also joining us to provide an added perspective on how open architecture can play a role in redesigning system architectures are Dave Ext, Chief Technologist, North America Public Sector at Red Hat. Uh, David works globally with the teams of technical experts to help government clients improve service delivery for open source uh, methods. He guides cross-functional teams with relentless focus on ensuring that Red Hat's products in particular and their services address government needs for security, compliance, standards, efficiency, and technology. And also joining us is Mark Kalem, Managing Director Advisory at KPMG. Mark has extensive experience in the management and organizational transformation of large organizations in the public sector and in healthcare. Mark also has extensive experience in implementing new and emerging technologies for large scale systems and architectures. Uh, Wayne, David and Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So Wayne, uh, let's start with you. Can you give us a snapshot of the key modernization challenges that you were facing at the Tennessee Department of Human Services and what you were actually hoping to overcome? Sure, we, we come from a fairly typical background, I would imagine for most state agencies in that very heavily legacy-based in terms of our platforms, no real integration, very siloed and, and our market strategy was very much fragmented and sort of traditional in terms of meeting customers in locations and physical lobbies versus a more virtual channel strategy where you could meet the customers where they basically want to be met now. So we, we, we were after two things. One was transforming the business model and the way we went to market to meet our customers. Secondly, we needed to do a pretty drastic modernization initiative on the technology that underpin that market strategy. So Wayne, can you describe why the state chose to implement an open source platform as part of its modernization strategy? Sure, we, we wanted the flexibility and the scalability of the product. We also wanted to be able to in, in use a product that could grow as our needs changed and flex with us as we, as we enabled the strategy and added in or took out bits and pieces of the architecture. And then Mark, I'd like to bring you into the conversation here and ask you, can, can you talk about from your perspective, what was unique about what you saw Tennessee doing and its approach to modernization and maybe why it provides a useful model for other states to take a closer look at? Yeah, sure, Wyatt. What's really interesting and what Tennessee did was, unlike um, other states sometimes who build monolithic systems, um, Wayne and his team decomposed the architecture into different layers. One layer was an engagement layer where you would have software that would you know, be the one-stop shop for all citizens, for providers. One layer was a shared services layer. So building common integration and shared services across the department. There was a program layer, which is where all the business applications stood. And then there was a data layer where all the data would be combined for better analytics reporting feedback. What was so innovative was that two things, not just the architecture, but the procurement strategy as well. Um, Wayne brought in different vendors for each different layer. KPMG was fortunate enough to work with him on the services layer where we brought in the Red Hat technology and built in this, this shared services layer using Red Hat open source technology um, to really enable um, the separation of these layers to build a loosely coupled architecture and make it such that the um, Department of Human Services could react faster to changes, kind of decoupling systems for future growth and long-term, you know, lower total cost of ownership. That's very interesting. 
Well, David, let me bring you in now um, and talk about how you and how you might actually describe how Red Hat and KPMG actually work together to, to bring the services layer into their IT architecture. And briefly, the role Red Hat played, uh, you know, to kind of power that integration work. Yeah. So if we take a look at the division of labor, you know, you think about it, KPMG specializes in the business of government and Red Hat specializes in the business of open technologies. And, you know, together we were helping government agencies like Tennessee accelerate the digitization of their services in ways they really never thought possible. So specifically, you know, in this case, Red Hat provided an open substrate for KPMG and Tennessee to innovate on top of. And, and in this case, it was OpenShift. And so by standardizing on that open platform, KPMG and Tennessee, they're able to reallocate uh, a lot of the time that they would have ordinarily have spent on integration for you know, various cloud providers, right? To, uh, to focus instead on innovation and improving service delivery. And this helps uh, and lets everybody, like in the case of KPMG, it allows them to address the needs of all 50 states with less rework. And it also allows KPMG um, to uh, customers to benefit uh, sooner from that accelerated uh, innovation because they, they are spending less time uh, reintegrating and more time innovating. Well, Wayne, I'm interested to hear, so how did this integration effort and this open source approach ultimately help you modernize and ultimately also uh, deliver better services to your constituents? The, the key benefit was speed to market and, and reaction time particularly during the pandemic, reaction time was very, very critical given all the programs that got launched and all the additional customers that the agency picked up given the impact of the pandemic across the state. So our ability to react quickly, cleanly, but most importantly, effectively was really key to, to our approach. And given that we had already started that approach, we reacted probably the fastest within the state on, on pandemic related things, but we also rolled those learnings into future states. So our go-to-market strategy now, our customer engagement strategy, all of that is driven by our ability to react quickly and effectively and to utilize many more channels than we had available to us prior to this sort of architecture. Interesting as well. Well, uh, Mark, um, uh, I know states have all different situations. Where are you seeing maybe the greatest potential for other states to use open source platforms the way Tennessee did to improve constituent services? Yeah, I, I think the challenges that Tennessee faced are kind of very similar across other states as well. And as states modernize uh, their infrastructures and, and their programs to provide the benefits that Wayne talked about, um, they need to rethink things because the days of just being single cloud, the days of monolithic systems are gone. Mm -hmm. The future is multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, um, the ability to exchange data and the, 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 the technologies and the architecture that Wayne's developed that both Red Hat and KPMG have helped through the use of open source enable this layer that can suddenly be cross cloud, that could, that could um, accelerate integration. It's also about building a set of shared services. So services that you, you need to cross your department, regardless of what cloud they're on, build them once, reuse them over and over again. And that's what Wayne did. Security services, business rules engines, uh, process automation, workflow built once, and now all your systems can use those same set of services over and over again, regardless of where they sit in the cloud, on-prem or whatever. Makes I think a lot of sense. They really benefit from that. Yeah. And then lastly, David, how else might states benefit from adopting open source platforms, uh, particularly when it comes to improving constituent services? Yeah, I want to expand on what Mark said. And, you know, open source really lets states keep their options open, right? So they don't have to worry as much about guessing right, about picking the right cloud platform, especially as, you know, the, the state's needs change and also the cloud provider features and pricing changes all the time too. So this is all, you know, open source, allows uh, states to run everywhere they wanna be. And that's why open source is so powerful because it shifts a lot of that control back from a vendor's hands into the, the hands of the government. Well, and I'm sure that uh, the public and constituents all uh, get to see the benefit of that as well. 
Well, Wayne, David, and Mark, thank you so much for joining us to share your respective insights around the adoption of open source approaches and ways that that's helping to modernize citizen services. Thank you. Well, you're welcome.